Hi, I'm Jill Golick. Um, and because I was a television writer and I was used to budgets and making things in a certain way, I kept going around to people and saying, give me money to do this. And they would say to me, like, what are you even talking about? Um, so, but anyway, eventually at a certain point in time, I got some money to make a web series. It's called Ruby Sky PI, and it has turned into an interactive series for kids. And uh, so I'm going to try, I think, and show you a little clip from it. I'm not sure what the most effective way is. Shall I just click on it? Just click on the middle way. Yeah. No. With the left mouse button. Yeah. You, okay. my dear, are a regular Andrew Sherlock Paul? Holmes. People ask me, Ruby, how do you get yourself into these situations? Tell us why your spirit haunts this library every night. I have a mystery for you. Its name is Ruby Sky. She's always sticking her nose into other people's business. Don't laugh or anything, but uh, I always wanted to be a detective. There's something different about you. Don't tell me. Did you catch that? The way his eyes move to his left, our right? You're collecting evidence against me? No. You are the greatest sister ever. Thank you. Well, technically, yes. So she's not for me? Oh, aren't you so sweet? Can you tell me what you were doing Wednesday night? I'm not a suspect. My suspect? Go away, Ruby. Yes. Please, go away, Ruby. You? Knucklehead. You have totally lost your mind, Ruby Sky. You, you stay, stay out, out of it. It's a detective thing. But not again. Thanks for rescuing me, Ruby. You know what, Ruby? You're a pain in the butt. So you get the feel for it a little bit. And I should say, um, as we're going along, you know, feel free to interrupt and ask me questions as we go along because I, I've, I've just thrown a whole bunch of ideas together which I hope will be helpful to you in some way. So what I want to do is kind of go through the project, go through some of the elements of the project, show you how they work in a kind of finished way, and then talk about some of the thinking underlying it and some of the documents we use to make it all happen. So, whoop, yeah, here's the, here's the show uh, as it stands now. We have three web se seasons of the web series. You'll notice every season we have a completely different number of episodes because we let the story determine how many episodes we have. Um, we have, um, these are all our websites, uh, so we have starting with this one, this is uh, our main home site, it's got all the episodes on it, uh, because it's interactive we got Ruby's case files, clues that you can solve, but we've also got all this other content for kids on the site. Um, that is thematically related to each season. So in the first season, the mystery was a Nigerian scam. So we had all this other information about scams and also about Nigeria, just to point out that it wasn't only a scam place. And, um, you know, and Ruby is a brownie baker, so we have re brownie recipes. We have all kinds of content for kids. We have how to audition, how to be an actor, just a wide, wide variety of content for kids. And then, Anything that happens in the fiction of the show that we can make real on the web, we do. So our second season was set in a library, the O'Deary Library, so we built a website for that. We have a puzzle site, O'Deary Puzzles. Third season um, was about a, a robbery at a charity, and so what was stolen from the charity was a toy, so we built a toy called a Flobble. I should have brought one today, but we built the Flobble's website. Um, once when Haley, who's Ruby's little sister, was mad at Ruby, she uploaded her um, report card to the internet. So you can go to readmysistersreportcard.com and read Ruby's report card. Uh, this site is just um, what was the was somebody's alibi. Uh, in the third season, she said she was at Madame Butterfly School of Kickboxing and Macrame, but when you go to the site, it's out of business. <laughs> so clearly, not. And then this is charity. And anyway, so 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 lots of lots of <laughs> lots of websites. Uh, we have maintained four tumblers. Uh, we have a bunch of games. 
Uh, we have very active social media challenge and dozens and dozens of extra features, videos that are available. So that's a lot of stuff to keep track of, and we have a lot of documents that help us kind of do that. So, and I, I, we're going to look at a few of them. But this like weird thing here that I put in the corner here, that's, that's, um, that's our marketing map. <laughs> Um, which is like an incomprehensible thing, but we spent a lot of time trying to figure out where our audience is and how to, you know, reach them and and how to understand our marketing map. So, okay, I'm going to quickly show. I, oh, I, so I want to focus a little bit on the haunted library, which was our second season, and how the interactivity worked. And I'm going to show you the second episode, but first I have to set the stage for the first. So, uh, Ruby is not a very good student. She didn't do very well in school and she's had her computer confiscated. So she and her sister have had to go to the library to use the computers there. Uh, the library is owned, it's a private library, it's owned by a woman named Ava O'Deary. Ava O'Deary is very old and very, very strange. Um, she likes alliteration and she dresses up as characters in books and she's in a wheelchair. Um, so anyway, so, uh, so while Ruby's in the library, she discovers that the librarian, Ophelia Bedelia, believes the library to be haunted. And so she's arranged for a seance to find out what is going on, you know, why the, library, why the ha ghost is haunting the library. And Ruby has contrived to be at this, um, at this seance. So we're just going to watch what happens as the seance continues. And it's, no, no. It's going to play. Play. Previously on Ruby Sky P.I. Haley, don't be mad. Why would I be mad, Ruby? The name of the book I'm reading, Little Brother. I have a mystery for you. I'm doing a fundraising campaign for Because I Am a Girl. I'm going to win. It's just to ward off evil spirits. You communicate with ghosts. Speak now! <gasps> Spirit of the library, what have we done to anger you? I'm sorry. Very, very sorry. We come in reverence and peace. No, there, there was something, but it's gone now. The clock's been broken for 40 years. <gasps> Find my will. That's Ava's mark! Descendants, demonstrate that you are deserving. Discover my will. I saw something last night. No, I saw nothing. But nothing didn't send those books flying. Something did. Something couldn't have disappeared into thin air as if it were nothing. None of this makes any sense, which is why I'm doing this. This is a black light, not to be confused with a flashlight. When the ghost steps in this, its shoes will tell the tale. Hey, how's little brother? It's good. You can't put it down. You should check it out. I'll put it on hold. <laughs> Is that somebody crying? <laughs> Ophelia, what's wrong? Ava's dead. 
Ava O'Deary? She was here yesterday. And at midnight, she was dead. Midnight? That's when we heard Ava's voice. I thought you said she was dead. Well, we had a seance here last night. We were trying to contact the O'Deary Library ghost. I heard about that ghost. It threw a book at me, and I don't know why. That's when we heard Ava's voice. Well, it sounded like Ava's voice, but it came from the psychic's mouth. What did she say? Find my will. Her will? Is it missing? I hope not. The entire family's going to be here any minute to hear it read. The reading of the will, that sounds interesting. And I still have so much to do. <laughs> There's a new puzzle on odiripuzzles.com. Oh, wow, look at this. This is my last puzzle because I am dead. Intriguing, don't you think? Again? <laughs> Forty-nine and three-eighths. Perfect. Uh, Mrs. O'Deary was a truly great woman. So organized, so thorough. She planned every detail of her own memorial service. So controlling. Uh, uh, Mr. Finch, uh, Ava's lawyer would now like to say a few words. Mm -hmm. Mrs. O, uh, Ava wanted, uh, oh, had a few, uh, a few words. <laughs> Eulogy. I was a wonderful, worldly woman. Yes, I... yes, yes. She's dead. Read the will. Uh, well, considering she's not here, I just, I need to ensure that the, uh, the family is, uh, Spit out! Assembled. Uh, Lillian O. Scheidt. Yes. Get on with it. Uh, Henry O. Henry? Henry or oh, Henry? Accounted for. Quite. And I must say that I'm very sad about Aunt Ava's unfortunate departure. Um, uh, Mr. O'Fine. Anyone from the O'Fine family? Dead. The O'Fines are anything but fine, tragic, uh, willing to be stampede, crushed, all of them. And the rest of us are going to die of old age, unless you get going. As you know, Mrs. O'Deary had a rather large estate, including her fortune and this library. Now, as for the will, she didn't leave me one. There's no will? No will. No will, which means that everything is left to her closest relative. And that's me. I'm gonna get everything. I'm rich! No, 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 no! There must be some kind of mistake! Recount! Oh. How terrible for you. We'll just have to find you something to remember the old coot by. Here you go. That's a very good Sherlock Holmes first edition! No! You can't have it! It was Ava's first first edition, actually. Ophelia Bedelia, librarian. Ex-librarian. How soon till you get rid of them? Uh, of what? The books. I suppose you could donate them to a library. Th th this, is, this is a library. Not anymore. Bye-bye books. Hello, secure, maintenance-free, adult-only, condo living. <laughs> I'm tearing the place down. Your books are toast. <gasps> I'm a genius. <laughs> I'll burn the books. There's no point in carting them all over town. <laughs> this doesn't make any sense. Ava controlled everything, down to the last cupcake. There's no way she would have died leaving the fate of the library unknown. And she'd never have left it to her. And then there's that voice we heard last night. Obviously it wasn't Ava's ghost telling us to find the will. That's impossible. I guess there's no harm in doing the last puzzle she posted. And so we come to the interactivity. Uh, so we're going to try and pop out here to the internet. If you go here, this is a, a, this this puzzle published after the first episode was released. 
And you can see this is Ava's last puzzle. It says, this is my last puzzle because I am dead. Which book does each character come from? So I don't know if you guys know, and you don't have the, um, you don't have the screen up. So I mean, we could try and go through this very quickly. This is a Canadian book, Gilbert Blythe. Anybody know? I, when I do the, yes? Anne of Green Gables. Can you type that in, do you think? E, Anne with an E. Um, and then um, the second one is Reap a Sheep. Voyage of the Dawn, Voyage of the Dawn Treader, correct. Fezzik. Princess Bride. Princess Bride. Dorothy Gale. Wizard of Oz. Wizard of Oz. A reader. Um, okay, this one's very hard. Dragomir Gorovich. Yes, okay, good. <laughs> Very good. And so we just have to um, count out these spaces. You've got, you, you got a choice there. There you go. <laughs> Deathly Hallows, yes. We're going to have to do them all. You're going to have to go back up to uh, Voyage of the Dawn Treader here. Um, and then we've got Mr. Bobo. It's a Neil Gaiman book. Coraline. And then the last one is hey, uh, oh yeah, Voyage of, Voyage of the Dawn Treader, as in walking tread. And you notice that there are some letters here that are highlighted. <coughs> so then you type them in at the bottom, starting with A, V, A, A S, W, I, L, L, C. O, M, M, as in calm. Oh, look, it's avaswill.com, and here's a link. Let's click on that. <laughs> yeah. And lo and behold, between the episodes, you find what Ruby is looking for. And you can see Ava's will, it's, it says, regretfully, I am dead. It, we've actually got dying words. That's a eulogy that her lawyer didn't actually get to give during the, um, during the, the, the reading of the will. And she also has a cucumber lemonade recipe and quotes from books and links to her social media. Um, but um, uh, the, just the thing to remember is Ava is the master of alliteration. OK, do you want to hit the, uh, the, video. the video, please? Yeah. Everybody needs some volume. Like this. Dead, departed, deceased, defunct. Before breathing my last breath, I contended with the contentious conundrum to wit my will and to whom to leave my legacy. Thanks to two generations of family feuding, I know you not, O oh family of mine. So, O oh darling, O oh dearie descendants, here is the dealio. Prove your worth to win my wealth by discovering my will. I've left you eleven puzzles. Solve them and you will find my will. The first family never to find it falls heir to our fortune. Oh, I'm late. I'm late. Oh, I am late. The late Ava O'Deary. So long. And watch out for rabbit holes. <laughs> so, so now Ruby is set on this quest to find the, the, the can, can you put me back on the, yeah. okay. So um, it's on this quest to find the puzzles that she mentioned. And um, let's just go to the next screen. Yeah. Next. Hello. So the first thing, you, you know, you, you remember, Ava's dressed as a rabbit and she's holding Alice in Wonderland. So um, Ruby goes 
to the bookshelf and takes out Alice in Wonderland. And this is what she finds. She finds this puzzle. I'll give you a little close-up of it. Any idea what you're seeing here? This is the first puzzle she has to solve. If you have any ideas about what this might say and whether this particular symbol right here is a hint. <laughs> um, uh, so in the story, after finding this puzzle, Ruby manages to get herself and her poor little sister, Haley, who always gets dragged into things against her will, she gets them locked in the library overnight. So it's a really fun episode where they're locked in the library, possibly with the ghosts or all kinds of weird things happening. But while Ruby is running around the library with a flashlight looking for more clues and for the ghosts, she puts <coughs> Haley at the computer, because Haley's a bit of a technology wizard, and she says, um, she, she actually says, gives her a bunch of jobs to do at the, at the computer. But then she says, send Ava an email. And Haley goes, you know, A, she's dead, and B, I don't have her email address. And this is how they solve the puzzle. Yeah. There we go. Did you see it? <laughs> Let's just take it back just a little bit. Not all the way. No, to about here, yeah. Don't leave me. A little further forward. You stay here and start. Nothing to worry about. Okay, after this. I hope. Ava returned this copy of Anne of Green Gables to the library the day she died. Hmm. She's always looking for How's toys. it going, Haley? No Facebook, no Twitter, but she has a Pinterest account with one board. There's a Pinterest board. account. One board. There's clue Sounds there. like clue number three to me. Emailing you a screen cap and the URL. Thanks. Now send that email to Ava. I see the app part? sign, so I know it's an email address, but I can't figure it out. Try reading every second letter. Need a clue? Send me an email. Please try Ava and send an books email. Ava loves books at It's all other clues. Chocolate. Ask her about the will. Have I mentioned that she's dead? Just do it. Dear Mrs. O'Deary, please forgive the intrusion on your death, but where's your will? This is ridiculous. A dead woman is not going to answer her email. OK, I'm wrong. Read it. You, as in the letter U. What do you think it means? Dear Ava, sorry to keep bothering you like this, but what does you mean? Okay, so we could stop now um, because we don't get her answer till the next episode. But you can, e you can email Ava, you can email her quite a few times and find out, you know, and, and communicate with her. That part of the, the show is actually runoff conductor. It works really well with kids. They just love getting those emails to and from. Ava, and there are a few other ways to communicate with her. We think she might have Wi-Fi in her cough, and we're not really <laughs> sure. Um, so okay, if you give me back the slideshow, I'll just show you, you know, it was very comp, the clue thing was very, very complicated for us, because first of all, there were 11 of them. They each had like a different system, and then they, you know, they would be mentioned, you would see the book in episode one, and then you would like get the clue to where the clue was, she would find it in a different episode, and then, you know, you would get the solution, because each clue gives you a letter and it, it, it eventually is an anagram and so you need all the letters to from the 11 clues to solve the final puzzle so we had we made up this clue bible and for every clue we had listed every episode and scene where it appeared and what happened there and then 
uh, you know, my original graphic for, this is an early version, so you have my original version of what the clue was going to look like, and then later on in another draft we added in actually the, the beautiful version of the clues that Haley Moore did for us. Uh, this is this is actually for the Pinterest board. So where it gets mentioned is in the text, and then these are the books that are on the Pinterest board um, for you to figure out. And uh, they all start with A. Just say it. Um, and then another thing we do is we annotate our scripts. We tend to work with a. Um, a very traditional film crew. I usually work with an independent uh, a crew that's used to making independent feature films. So they're used to moving fast, working with little resources, and so on. Uh, but they're not, not used to like the needs of a transmedia project. They don't know that we're going to have to have a copy of the, we're going to need all the covers of all the books we've made to put on our website, or that we're going to need um, uh, pick, you know, photos of the little girl who appears in this scene or a recording of a conversation to put on the website later to be part of Ruby's uh, case files and those kinds of things. So we go through and we, uh, my, uh, I usually have an assistant uh, who's working with me during production, who'll be my transmedia coordinator. She'll keep track of all this stuff and then go to all the department heads and say, you know, we're going to be taking these things from you at the end of the shoot. Or, you know, or to the photographer, get this picture on this such and such a day. This episode, The Haunted Library, was set in the O'Deary Library. We built a website for the O'Deary Library. And it does have, you know, it has an ad for the web series. You could actually watch them here. Links up to our other websites. And it's got some character content. There's, you know, a message from the librarian. And haley has got some book reviews on here and stuff like that. But it's also a really great website for anybody who's interested in YA literature. It's full of book reviews. Reviews, uh, we, do, we, we do original reviews of, um, of, of books for our audience. So we've do, in doing this, we've connected with all these publishers who send us books before they're published, and we review them and put them up. And then we connect with the authors on Twitter. And they're, meanwhile, promoting our website and then people sort of filter through to our show. Um, we also, uh, one of the things we did early on is there are all these people on YouTube who call themselves booktubers, and they do YouTube reviews of books. And so we would put their, their uh, videos on our website, and we'd leave them, we collected playlists, we'd leave them little messages, and then they in turn would do a video, go, I just found this web series, and they'd send their whole communities over to us. So we spent a lot of time sort of finding the top YouTubers and connecting with them and, and working with them in that way. Um, uh, so when we have all these, and we have a lot of websites, we have a lot of content going up, what we do is we have editorial calendars. So we'll start off by, you know, saying, okay, it's October, what are all the, who, let's just see, who's our focus audience, what are the channels we're going to reach them with, what are the tactics for reaching them, here's the content and events we're going to cover this month. Um, you know, some stuff about librarians and, and the books that they're reading, and then we'll do um, kind of a calendar thing that addresses who the audience is, what day of the week it is, what's going on our website, what's going on our Tumblr, what's going to be on Facebook, what's going to be on Twitter, what's going to be on, yeah, there's more pages, O'Deary Library, <laughs> O'Deary Puzzles, you know, so, so we're always trying to move content through because we have we are like over the top in how much content we churn out there. We're never running out of content. <laughs> um, we also have these, which are style sheets that we make for every one of our websites, so that they always maintain their branding. We, and it's very easy for us to, you know, access the logos, the colors, and so on that go with each site. Um, okay, so here's the mar that marketing map. It is, it is cr a crazy thing. So this is just different ways of looking at our audience, different 
different ways of thinking about the audience. So just the audience in general, who are the influencers. Um, I can't even read what that one is. And then the channels they're using, um, uh, the tactics we use to reach them, our channels. So there's many, many ways of kind of looking at and thinking about our audience. When you've got a show that's set in a, a library and that has a, a lot of clues that have to do with books, we spend a lot of time thinking about what books to use. What books would we use? And so one, one of the things we did was we went out and we found books that had um, big communities already online around those uh, books. and, and um, so we used, you know, of course, Harry Potter books. Uh, Little Brother is by Cory Doctorow, who's a big fixture on the web and has a big site called uh, Boing Boing. Uh, and then there's a, a community. Let's just see. I'm going to. Um, I, I, we, we actually have a little. Yeah. Well, that's a very interesting question. So we went to the lawyers and we asked that very question. And what they told us was, you can, na you can mention the name of a book. You can quote a small piece of a book. You can certainly name the author of a book. But what's copyrighted, or copy, or anyway, however you use copyright as a verb, um, is the cover art. So you can't show the illustration on the cover of a book uh, because that belongs to the illustrator. So we made all our own book covers. So you can use the name of the book but with a fake cover? So we just, we, our art department just made book covers. But isn't that defamation of their branding? No. Really? It's complete, I, you know, and I, I went around and I talked to a lot of film people who had done the same thing. And it's the standard, I don't know, defamation of branding. I never thought of that, yeah. <laughs> oh my god, call the lawyers, yeah. But can't you just send a link for the Send a link? Send a link for a YouTube or... Well, but when you're showing it on the screen in a video, you have to show something. Like she's always pulling books off the shelf and showing them all these books here. We shot in a religious library, and every book is a Bible. <laughs> <laughs> every one of them. Which was kind of interesting, because none of the crew was sitting around reading. Anyway, um, so, so we mentioned a lot of books. I, I, I'll just, and then of course, you know, just to continue promoting the book. This is a video that won't play? OK, so we'll skip it because we don't even need it. Another thing we did in terms of marketing was Haley, Ruby's little sister, is not into mysteries. Haley is a do-gooder. And in the first season, she was collecting signatures to have plastic water bottles, single-use plastic water bottles banned because of the horrible things that they do to the environment. And this time, in this season, we knew we wanted her to be raising money for a charity because it was going to play into um, another, like, a, a way the storyline worked. And uh, we started looking for a charity that would sort of fit with us and who would be interested in working with us. And so we met, met with Plan, which has a charity co called Because I Am a Girl. You probably have it here, too, because there are lots of local branches. But we worked with Because I Am a Girl Canada. And Haley began fundraising for them. And the way girls fundraise for Because I Am a Girl is that they do pink lemonade stands. So you, you have a lemonade stand, and people come, and they buy lemonade, and then you donate that money to Because I Am a Girl. And so we showed her having her pink lemonade stand as part of the show. Of course, she'd been up all night with Ruby in the, in the library, so she kind of fell asleep during it. But um, and then the mean girl got to make the money instead. But we did that with we should so we showed that with them. Uh, and on our website, we every week we put out a lemonade recipe. We we wrote a little piece about because I am a girl. And in return for all of this, because I am a girl, sent our videos out in their weekly newsletter, posted them in their news feed. Um, 
put them on Twitter and so on. So this is just a little recap of it's what we cost. did with Because I Am a Thank Girl you. in the show. I'm doing a fundraising challenge for Because I Am a Girl. Would you like to make a donation? Excuse me, would you like to make a donation to a great cause? Uh, so they really help promote us Because I Am a Girl back. Did you know that 70% back. of the world's poorest people are women and girls? There she is asleep. Thank you. This is the first time I've ever been paid for detecting and I'm donating every penny of it to your campaign. Thanks to everyone for coming out to support Because I Am A Girl. Invest in girls and change the world. And the girl who raised the most money is... <laughs> Hilly Sky. Because I Am A Girl is a real initiative that does fantastic work. All of us here at Ruby Sky PI are going to make a donation. We and we actually had a fundraising. Investing in a girl is a great way to fight poverty. You snooze, you lose. So we actually have a fundraising link to our Because I Am a Girl fundraising campaign on our website. And, and now, um, as we're preparing to launch our, our shows <laughs> on iTunes, we'll go around to Because I Am a Girl all around the world and say, here's a free download to our show if you want to use it as a fundraiser or anything like that, because <laughs> we're hoping that we'll drive viewers to other uh, seasons of the show. Um, Another thing we do in marketing is because we have a, the audience of a certain age, we use a lot of gifts, and we give we put gifts on on Tumblr, and they often um, they often drive audiences to us. And there's a community on YouTube called Nerd Fighters. They're the followers of the Vlog Brothers, um, Hank and John Green, and um, they have the symbol that they do. That's the nerd fighter symbol. It's in our show. And their, their slogan is DFTBA, don't forget to be awesome. And John Green's, uh, one of the characters in his book is Colin Singleton. So we just worked a little bit of this stuff into our show. Um, nothing big, nothing overt. But then we made gifts of them. And we released them on Tumblr and sent them to the um, nerd fighters tumblers. And these got reblogged thousands of times and then drove a lot of traffic to our show. Um, OK, so here's the big picture document. I've got like a billion things going on in the show. So what I do is I'll make a document that lists all the elements, what they are. So the videos, the interactive clues, the websites, the tumblers, the social media, and the marketing initiatives. And then each thing will have a page which will detail all the elements of it and where we are. And we just keep <coughs> updating this over the course so that everybody else can figure out what it is I have in mind. Um, no, that's the wrong way. Uh, we have a transmedia Bible that sort of, um, in addition to having character stuff in it and so on, we have some rules for the world, how things work in our world, rules for Ruby's mysteries. They work in a very specific way. And then also, not only do we have places in Ruby's real life world, which is our, our places in, that really exist in Toronto, we also have her web world, the, the world that exists there. And um, of course, we make you know these kinds of things that go to distributors or broadcasters or anything to help us uh, sell our show. Um, so that's kind of the overview. Um, sort of the result of doing this show, building this show, is we've kind of created a company. We call it Story 2.0. It's building web-first <coughs> entertainment franchises for kids and families. Um, we believe that in this marketplace, you have to have a focus on your audience and that uh, the audience wants shows that are creator driven. That is come from a place of creativity and a, a need to tell a story. Um, we've been, you know, doing the business too, and we figured out how to finance these kinds of programs. We're beginning to learn about distribution, how to uh, drive revenue, and we're interested in working, partnering up with people with great 
ideas. And that's how to reach me. Questions? Yeah. What is the average age of your audience? Our audience, um, in if you if I go to the broadcaster, I say eight to fourteen. Uh, but in reality, I know we hit like a really strong 20-something demographic because when I run contests and then I email them and I say, can I have your address? They say, oh, I go to university. And so we get a lot of, we, and we get a lot of feedback from people in their 20s who are really interested in the show and the interactivity. What is the best way to communicate with them? Emails, phone? Everything. <coughs> like it, with the audience? Direct. To interact with the audience, whatever, whatever platform they're on. So we're everywhere they are. We're on YouTube. We're on Facebook. We're on Twitter. We're on Instagram. Where they are is where they find us. You know, they're, they use uh, whatever cha channel they use is where we communicate with them. We get a lot of commenting on on YouTube but we also you know we have email addresses on the site and people email us uh, they communicate with email it, for for certain kinds of things but more often it's commenting on on different channels or tweets you know like and 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 you ask about the age group the, um, the first person who ever always tweets a new, about a new episode is in his 30s, and he's, he's a Finnish guy who's living in China. So there you go. You know, like, he just, you know, uses it to, to learn English. Okay, yes. Two question. Um, well, two questions. How big's your team? And also, how did you um, basically kickstart your company in light of that you've come out of... TV kind of thing, where they're very reluctant to invest in something so groundbreaking. Because it, it strikes me as if kind of when you see exactly what you're doing now, it's a no-brainer that it's actually a, a sustainable business. But it's that genesis and how you funded that. So um, there was um, uh, an equity financer in Toronto who in 2010 decided that they were going to finance a small number of web series. Uh, to the tune of about 100,000 Canadian dollars each, which was um, less than half of the budget I was looking at. And uh, I guess it's about um, 50,000 pounds, is that ish? 48,000 pounds, something like that. So um, I, this, and this is where my, my life changed, right? So I went to all these producers, I said, we have to get this money, we have to get this money. And I put in six projects with different producers, each with different content and different marketing plans, different audiences. And then at the last minute I said, I have this idea, Ruby Sky, I'm going to put that in too, but no producer, just me. And that was the one that they financed, and then suddenly my whole, I had to build an audience. So in the first season we had them financing the show, and all the creative people contributed their creative um, work as, you know, they didn't get paid. In other words, we in, they invested in the project with, with their creative contributions. Um, and we had, the way we worked that was we had a full crew. And the crew was actually paid cash, so we did a full crew but, and, and paid our actors. But after that, all the web stuff and everything, they were all gone, and it was just me building websites and, you know, doing, writing blog posts and stuff like that. And then each season I've been able to finance more and more, and at this point I have someone full-time working with me who's running sort of the social media and the online stuff. <coughs> We've got a guy who's working on distribution and I have a business partner as well. So there are four of us sort of on the project. So do you create yourself all the content? Yes. Wow, that's impressive. I don't sleep. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> I just really wanted to get an insight into the creative process. I mean, do you write the script first and then you include the transmedia elements or do you do everything in concert? We try to start very... We wouldn't... We, we'll have an idea for the mystery 
And as soon as we're at the concept stage, we'll be able we'll all start thinking like, who's the audience? Where are we? What are the what are the hooks that we can reach out to market this through? So the third season is called The Maltese Puppy and there's a dog in it. So, oh, we can go to like all the dog people and and so on. So we'll we'll and we'll start to think that way. Um, immediately and as as we begin the process of writing and using all the cards and breaking the story and all that stuff at the same time I'll be building out all the other elements yes yeah, I just want to say fascinating project thank I you think apart from the mystery <coughs> touching identity empowerment and education in, in, in empathy with the others uh, I'm quite um, interested to hear for how long will the project be running for so we started in 2010 with the first season and we've just completed releasing the third season and the national broadcaster in Canada CBC commissioned our third season so they're our partner in it so we've gone from like fully independent to having a broadcast partner which is pretty fantastic and they actually they commissioned it for their website and um, the rules of funding and everything allowed them to put the web series on television starting last Saturday. And also in terms of hijacking all this audience, I mean, of course, you had all the readers. Yes. Yes. So that was the key strategy. Well, that was, in, for each season, we've had a variety of strategies to um, pull in audiences. Uh, so this year, it's more around dogs and. Um, uh, we've got always got a strong charity and um, you know social good thing, and then the whole girl power thing. I mean, I don't know what's going on on your television screens here, but in Canada and the U.S., there are no strong girls. Uh, the only the only television content for kids is either animation or sitcom. So we felt that there was a real gap in the market. There was no mystery and no strong girl leads. So this gave us an opportunity to give them something <coughs> different. Even sisters, you don't see sisters on television. So that was a, another opportunity, yeah. Yeah, about the calendar, uh, how uh, do you solve the, uh, it worked uh, in, a, in a line or if somebody discovers the series in the middle of, of the running, how do you work the calendar? How much time it lasted? Well, what it's very, it's kind of odd because in this day of Netflix, and I was talking about this with Robert last night, in this day of Netflix, you just want to binge watch everything. And now all the episodes are all for all three seasons are online and you can watch them except you can't watch the third season here yet because it's geo blocked. But, um, but um, uh, you know, you could, because it's everything, all the episodes are up. Um, we roll them out one at a time over the, over the course of, of the, f the season because it gives us something to promote every week. But once, you know, episode one is up and episode two goes up, you can always go back and watch episode one. And now you can watch every episode because they're there. Puzzles and everything that has been solved. Well, but the puzzles are still there. So if you go to the website, like, and you watch the episode, so you'll watch episode two, and underneath it, there'll be a link that says, we solved the clue from this episode. So you have the choice. You can just go and on, or you can stop and you can solve the clue and play with it. And how much time lasted? Every season is about an hour's worth of content, but the number of episodes depends on the story and where the fun act breaks are. And it's, yes? How do you um, plan to migrate from a web series of like six minute episodes to, to a broadcast TV environment? Will they be running six minute episodes They're a week or will you be chunking them all together? Right now they're running six uh, minute episodes. So, you know, a lot of um, children's broadcasters, because they don't run advertiser advertising, like like little short pieces and they have this puzzle way of fitting them together. Uh, so they're running the six minute episodes, but every one of our seasons cuts together as about an hour's long movie, which is what we're gonna be releasing on iTunes soon. 
and that will be the ne next exploration is can we take our hours and uh, put them on a whole bunch of platf pay platforms and see if that drives some revenue back to the show. Yeah. That's interesting. Thank you so much for that. Okay. Um, are there, the, the small episodes, are they available free on the web? Yes. And yet, they, but you think that an hour's worth will then be... We'll see. You're not, you don't want to make it a sort of a closed group and so you have to subscribe. Um... You know, my audience, most of my audience is 8 to 14. And the problem with 8 to 14 year olds is they don't have credit cards. Yeah. You know, you need <laughs> grown ups for that. And, and, and the thing is, in, when you go to an iTunes or a Hulu or a Xbox or one of those things, the credit card is already there and you just have to click on it and you forget that you're paying. So we'll, we, we'll see. And then you have it whether you're connected to the internet or not, you know. And, and we think this is the kind of content parents will pay for for their kid. But. <laughs> yeah. But surely, I mean, in that subscription rate, this is right for evergreen. You know, your t-shirts, your sweatshirts, your uh, lunch boxes, your flashlights. The secondary income for this. <coughs> well, well, we haven't started with. I mean, we want to. We. I mean, look. What we make is this. Yeah. Um, and I want to see if we can make money on what we make before we get into becoming T-shirt makers. Yeah. Um, because I don't know how to do that, right? And then you have to ship them and store them and all that stuff. I'd like to be, like to still believe that I can make money from what I make, but I could be wrong. I think you can actually buy a t-shirt that says, you will never finance your web series by buying t-shirts. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Oh, yes. Are you having a problem with your users to place the answers on the internet before? They no. They through the experience and say, no, the puzzle is that it's a See, I would love it if they did that because it would mean that there are people do, you know, like that there's a big audience and, and so on. But no, we're not finding that. We're finding that kids do it, you know, the kids who solve the puzzle sort of do it quietly by themselves. And then they send us the answers or they email us and ask us for hints and so on. Uh, we did run around when we were rolling out this show, we ran a contest every week and the first five people who sent us the answers would win a prize and we, we you know, so we got in communication with lots of people. Um, but uh, nobody, nobody's been a spoiler yet. Yes, back at the back. Oh, and it's the last question, but I'm here to talk to. Uh, I'm just, uh, after hearing Johnny's story, um, which is kind of a, a bottom-up small s startup, and, and you're doing this on a bigger scale, what is, I mean, he was talking about about 1,200 people in his youth in your community base. What, what's the actual amount of your... Um, so at the, after we had rolled out our second season, we had 2.5 million video views. And, um, and when um, we put out our press release announcing that CBC had picked up our third season, it spread to every entertainment source in the world. In fact, it was covered in the Bangladesh Sun. <laughs> so, um, you know, we've been able to be very loud on the internet and the story of the show has spread quite well. Um, I don't. I don't think we have a sustaining audience yet, like to that would uh, push us into that could pay for a new season yet. But that could be coming. So, and the second question is: Thanks, but uh, what is the total budget at this point? <laughs> so, uh, maybe it's just an estimate. But what I'm really curious about is: How do you get from the point where Johnny is to the point where you are? Where is, like, um, will you move to Canada? Yeah. Um, <laughs> We, we have some good funding systems in Canada, so I've had an equity investor in all three seasons. Um, and then I've added a variety of other funds. So our third season was, and this is probably the best 
financed independent web series in the world, I would think. We raised 600,000 uh, Canadian dollars just for the web series in the third season, and then uh, more money for to do our interactive elements. So that's, it's, and, and I guess it's, you just divide by half to get to pounds-ish. But you, I mean, you've been very humble because you've won lots of awards. But yes. You've been influential in raising that money. Yes, yes, we've, we've won a lot, a lot of awards. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a bad day in our house when, you know, we don't, <laughs> when we don't win an award. We won, we won a lot, and it's been, it's been very exciting, and that's been part of the pleasure of doing this. I mean, you know, uh, for the first two seasons, I didn't get paid. This season, I did get paid. But it has been the most creatively satisfying project of my entire career, and, you know, that alone is... But as you a said, good you are in the perfect country. I mean, yeah. Canada is financing the most advanced transmedia projects in the world. So it's really the right place to be, not in London. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, but then on the other hand, you know, there's a lo there is a, a lot of resistance in Canada. So even though we have this financing and the broadcasters have the opportunity to do things, Everybody is like rejecting, is in the rejecting. The call. Oh, do I have to? I don't want to. So, so that part is is a little bit odd. Um, but anyway, that's my story. Thank you for listening. <laughs>